See, I got a problem when it comes to testing out new products. Before I do anything, I wanna look up the science behind it so I could have an idea of what to expect. When you look at the chips on the light, you'll notice different colored ones. Some are orange, some are yellow, some are red. This is what an average LED grow light spectrum looks like. One to 400, which you cannot see, is the UV range, and UV is actually a carcinogen. Exposure to it should be handled with caution. Also, it can damage your eyes, so I'd highly recommend not looking directly into the light or using safety glasses. But the range for the UV IR supplemental light bar is 365 to 420, and that's for the UV aspect. Let me go and mark that. So that's the UV part. Then IR of this dual light, 730 is right in the middle to 745. And then the Glow R60 R90 ranges from 650 to 665. That's also a small window. So basically we have two supplemental lights. One has just this and the other one has both of these which can be turned on and off interchangeably. All right, now let's see what the science says. Fuck this source because it's the lighting company. Fuck that, fuck that, fuck that. We want actual peer reviewed journals. All right, that's how you sift out the noise. All right, indoor grown cannabis yield increased proportionately with light intensity, but ultraviolet radiation did not affect yield or cannabinoid content. UVA spectrum figure 1B was provided by custom made LED bars, which had a peak wavelength of 385 plus or minus 5.5 nanometers. So that is this chart right here. And if you take a look at the Spider Farmer spectrum, you'll see it ranges from 365 to 420 nanometers, which is in this range. And to summarize, they saw no commercially relevant benefits to exposing cannabis plants to UV radiation, right? They referenced this study with UV exposure that said it was detrimental to cannabis growth and yield. Here's another study. We found no effect of UV on cannabinoid concentration. Although this study had a small sample size, combined with previous studies, a broad picture is emerging that UV photons do not increase cannabinoid concentration in high cannabinoid cultivars. So UVA ranges from 315 to 400 nanometers, while UVB ranges from 280 to 315. Here's another study, which actually grew these plants with different intensities of UV, shows that long-term exposure of various intensities of relatively short wavelength UV radiation had generally negative impacts on cannabis growth, yield, and inflorescence quality. For the first time, this paper described the visible symptoms caused by UVB stress on indoor cannabis plants. UV radiation provokes substantially reduced yield in one cultivar, reduced inflorescence quality in both cultivars, and had no commercially relevant benefits. That is three studies by itself with UV lighting. And here's the photo proof. As UV went up, this is what the buds look like. I mean, shall I proceed? I don't know. For the sake of bro science, I still might. Now, let's go to IR or infrared lighting. All right, so here's this study, impact of three different light spectra on yield, morphology, and growth trajectory. So they actually grew plants out. Y'all need to get people that really know how to grow to do these studies. These plants look like shit. Look at this shit. Ugh. Based on the data gathered from this experiment, as far red light intensity increases, yield of dry flowers significantly decreases and plant heights significantly increase. A yield reduction would obviously be a negative outcome for any producer, especially considering we did not see any significant differences in cannabinoid or terpenoid content. I mean, look, all the data says supplemental IR and UV lighting doesn't work. 
But honestly, all of the plants in these studies look like they were grown by someone that doesn't know how to grow. Now, I know someone who used UV lighting that ended up with a 30.7 THC yield. Test it. So I still have my doubts on if it's because of supplemental lighting. This is why I'm still moving forward with my bro science experiment. But I need your help on figuring out the best way to do it. So I have a 5x5 tent with a SE7000 light and I have two large plants that are beginning to bloom. In the comments, let me know where you would place the lights and plants and how you would conduct this experiment. The best comment will receive a free light from Spider Farmer and the details are listed in the description. In three months, I'll release the results of this comparison and I'll show my actual results. Also, if you have your own success stories with these lights, please comment below. If you enjoy this content, smash that like, hit that bell, and for the best tutorials on how to grow, check out my site, hwgrow.com.